your Premier League update and here in the studio, I'm Rebecca Lowe, Robbie Earl, Tim Howard alongside me. Plenty of action then throughout the day in the Premier League. We'll begin with the game at Villa Park. Villa winning their third of four games under Steven Gerrard. Tim, 1-0 though to Leicester it was after 14 minutes. Yeah, and, and in this play, they're really good in transition. See here, Daka eventually gets a hold of it and finds a little bit of space. Slips in Harvey Barnes here. Still has a little bit of work to do and just passes it coolly into the bottom corner. Once Madison picks up, you just see how many Villa players are caught up the pitch. They do a good job, to be fair, of recovering, getting back in, but they don't tackle the ball well. They don't win it. They have opportunities to do so. They have a back three intact, should be dealing with this, and they don't. And at this point, I'm thinking he should shift it and hit it, but he doesn't. He just uses Kansa as a guide right between his legs into the bottom corner for the one in the lead. And then, as we know, Lester struggle on set pieces. The ball comes in. Don't get it clear. Matty Cash is there on the back post. Buendia with a really good header in Kansa, who's onside, ends up getting just a toe to it, less than a, a toe to it, because he didn't even know he scored. But just there, the touch you can see from this angle as well, barely gets it past Cash rush Michael for the level of 1-1. And this is where it gets interesting. As the ball hits, it goes to the back post. Matty Cash again forces a save from Schmeichel the first time of asking. And the second time, he puts his hand on top of the ball. And so by letter of the law, his hand on top of the ball and the ground constitutes possession from the goalkeeper. And there, Jacob Ramsey kicks it out of his hand. Michael Oliver goes over and has a look at the VAR screen. You see there, it gets kicked out of Cash for Schmeichel's grasp and therefore the referee rules no goal disallows. However, it should have been a goal because he had saved the ball just beforehand and that is the exception to this rule. The IFAB rule, a goalkeeper is considered to be in control of the ball with the hand when the ball is between the hands or between the hand and any surface, e.g. ground, or by touching it with any part of the hands or arm, except key moment. If the ball rebounds from the keeper, all the keepers made the save. The key thing there was Michael Oliver wasn't shown the save from Schmeichel which then he led to putting his hand over the ball. And so the goal was disallowed, and he shakes his head because it should have been allowed. But no harm done in the end, Tim. No, it's still, again, shameful from Leicester City on set pieces. They're just so incredibly poor, and it shouldn't. Ezra Kansa is outside the width of the post. They have defenders there to defend, and they just don't do it. And Kansa gets his brace on the day. Second goal puts Villa up 2-1, and, and then, look, credit Leicester. They, they, they had to find a way back into the game. And Madison just shifts it here, gets it out of his feet. And I tell you what, he comes really, really close. And you'll see from this replay just how close it is. Past the post, hands on the head, he knows there. But then this, for me, is, is so far the save of the season. Harvey Barnes, good late run off the deflection, snap header. That has to be a goal. I mean, it's past Emmy Martinez. It's behind him. It's over him. And you just see here the big goalkeeper. Full stretch, palm over the top, absolutely brilliant save to give Villa the 2 1. Certainly kept three points with Steven Gerrard against his old manager, Brendan Rodgers. So the first four under Gerrard read three wins and a defeat. The next four, it's Liverpool away, which should be interesting as Gerrard makes his return to Anfield for the first time on the touchline as a boss. And then it's away at Norwich, home to Burnley, home to Chelsea on Boxing Day. Let's hear from Steven Gerrard. Well, Stephen, first of all, congratulations. You Thank seem you. as out of breath as your players did. <laughs> yeah, you do kick every ball on the side. Um, it was a tough game. It was a tough game, and obviously it went right to the wire. Um, I thought we were seeing two sides of us today. Second half, we were outstanding to a man all over the pitch. Started winning our duels, winning the second ball, start, started to compete better. Um, but in the first 45, we gave the ball away too much. We were too open. And... Um, Leicester caused us too many problems on the transition, so a lot, to us to, a lot for us to look at as well. In terms of the goals that were scored, Ez Ezri Konza obviously getting the first one. To get that three minutes later, he did get that, by the way. <laughs> did he? <laughs> he did, oh, okay, he did. Okay. Just got a foot to it. To get that one only a few minutes after conceding the first goal, were you pleased with that reaction? Yeah, it's really important. Um, I thought Leicester started really well. I think that was a combination of them having good players and, and dangerous players going forward, but also I thought we were too passive in too many areas of the pitch. Um, when we were, we were making passes, we were loads of sloppy turnovers when we were vulnerable, when we were open. Um, so I wasn't happy with our first half performance at all, so we had to uh, give them a few home truths at half-time, and the reaction they gave second half was much more like what we want. Just before half-time, Jacob Ramsey could have scored a goal, did score a goal, got disallowed, got overturned by VAR. What were your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, well, look, I mean, VAR get uh, many looks at it uh, from the side. Obviously, uh, as the managers Aston Villa, you're disappointed and frustrated. Um, but, you know, we have to respect the, the officials and VAR. They have a better view at it. Uh, they get the opportunity to see it more than once. So uh, we just have to get on with it. But I thought second half we had, you know, two or three really good chances to kill the game at 2-1. Um, I thought Oli was fantastic second half, you know, that chance when he's gone through. If he lifts it over the keeper, uh, maybe we can finish the game a lot quicker and that's the reason why we had a, a few nervy moments at the end. Emmy Martinez uh, stopped a, a brilliant opportunity as well. Doesn't always get a lot of credit in the goalkeeper side of things. Well, look, he was much more busier in the first half, um, but I thought as a team and a unit we defended his goal a lot better second half. They've had one um, big moment. It's a good header, but it's a top save. Uh, but against a good team uh, like Leicester, the way they've been coached, to just give one chance away in the second half, that's not too bad. How big a win does this feel? Because what it does is put you above Leicester. It's also a, a, a local rivalry in a way. And, of course, we can't not mention the fact that it's a win over Brendan Rodgers as well. Well, look, if we can find the second half performance over 90 minutes, because we had to ask for that at half-time against Man City, so we've still got loads of teething problems. We'll review the first four games, but to take nine points from 12 is a big return from the players. So they deserve a lot of credit for that, but there's still loads of work to do on the training ground. Um, a few are still not sure and committing properly to what we want, just because they're not sure and it's a little bit different for them. Um, we've got a full week now into Liverpool where we can get back on the training pitch and um, iron a few team problems out and then hopefully we'll be better come next week. That next stop, Liverpool, any sentimental thoughts in your head? None. None at all. Just want to go there and try and win and uh, try and take what we can. Um, you know, for us, we're, we're not competing with Liverpool in terms of the level we're both at at the moment, but we'll certainly go there and give everything we've got. We took City to the wire and I believe we should have took something out of the game with our second half performance. So we, we go there with confidence and belief with three wins out of four and we're going to try and make it as difficult as we can. Good luck. Thank you. That'll be some game to watch. Now it's Manchester United against Crystal Palace. Ralph Rangnick welcomed onto the touchline at Old Trafford by the home crowd. His first game as interim manager of United. And it was an interesting shape first and foremost, Rob. Yeah, so it's a back four and then he's got two, two, two in front of them. So they narrow through the central areas of the pitch from Becker, which means he wants to get overloads in those areas, have numerical advantage, maybe get the width from the fullbacks. We saw that a couple of times and some direct running in behind from Ronaldo. In this opportunity where he lays the ball back into the path of one of those central players. This time it's Bruno Fernandes, distant save from Guaita to put it to the side. And on the other side, Jaden Sancho gets himself in the wider position where there was space and he dips inside Klein here and he takes a shot. It deflects up and over the top of the ball. So normally at half time into the second half and Alex Tellez, who's played well, just has a free kick here that hits the top of the crossbar on its way through. It's Good connection on the ball. And then a big moment in the game from Crystal Palace point of view. And it's Jordan Ayew who's going to have the chance. As the ball's headed back there, he has a chance on the far post to find the corner of the net. And Palace have done well at Old Trafford in the last two occasions here. And probably could have made it a third goal uh, with Ayew just missing the target there. And then it became costly because a couple of minutes later, at the other end of the pitch, United working down the right-hand side. And when the ball comes back, Greenwood here, it's Fred with his right foot, his weaker right foot, of all the footballing talent on, on show, it's Fred with a lovely finish and a lovely celebration. He's been important to the team recently, winning balls, assisting, and here with his right foot getting the all-important goal. They've got Rannick's era off to a winning start. Big celebrations from the German on the touchline, back in football management. Good start for Ralph Ranick. Next up on Saturday, it's Norwich. Then it's Brentford, Brighton, Newcastle, followed by Burnley, Wolves and Aston Villa to take them into 2022. And he will look at that and think all of them are winnable. Let's hear the first thoughts post-match of Ralph Ranick. Ralph, well done. A winning start. What did you make of it? I'm very happy with the, the way that the, 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 the team performed, the way they played, especially the first half hour was uh, exceptional, I thought. Extreme high intensity and tempo. Uh, the only thing that was missing in that p period of the game was the one or two nil. But the way the team defended as a team, the whole game, we had control on the game. So uh, I'm very happy with the game, the performance, but also with the result. Clean sheet, that's, that's the most important part. How big is that? It's just United's third clean sheet all season. I mean, I said from the very beginning when I had my first press conference, this is the things that we have to improve on. We, we need to produce clean sheets. We need to have and get control on the game. 
and uh, with only one training session, or it was not even a full training session, what they did, what they showed today, was more than I expected, to be honest. And is that something for you to build on, even after just one game defensively today? Yes, of course. I mean, <laughs> if, you, if you have a clean sheet, you minimum have one point. And I always said, with this group of players, we are always able to concede one or two goals. And that was the case today. Was patience important in terms of finding that goal in the end? Yes, but we always tried to yeah to be on the front foot on the front foot that's what i like today we were never maybe okay the last 5 minutes when we had one or two corners to de to defend but apart from that we were always trying to keep them away from goal to be on to be on the counter attack so that was the good thing that was especially the ones that i liked and a little tweak marcus rashford a little more centrally he got in behind quite often today was that a ploy is that something you want to see from marcus a bit more support for cristiano <laughs> Yeah, we wanted to play with two strikers uh, um, and with two tens uh, in a semi position. That was the idea to to get more control in the centre of midfield and uh, to put pressure on their defence most of the time, but also make sure that uh, Cristiano was not the only striker. By the way, what Cristiano worked today against the ball, chapeau. That's shut a few headlines up, hasn't yeah. it? Thank you. What about Fred? Doesn't always get the the headlines here, but all round today and the finish, the winning goal. Yeah, and with his right foot, uh, I couldn't believe. Uh, I had to ask my one of my assistant coaches if it was Fred with the right foot. Normally, he can only shoot with his left foot. Yeah, he's a fantastic player again against the ball. What he did together with McTominay on six, this is what 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 you need for this kind of football. And uh, I'm very happy for him and uh, at the whole team. Congratulated to him for this goal. And you haven't got much time because you've got games coming thick and fast. But what will you be working on to build on this now in the next few games? To keep it's all, always easier to build on things when, it, when they're being successful. And I want the players to believe in this kind of football. And uh, I think they also said clean sheet, clean sheet. That's what it's about. So we have to going directly into that direction, what we did today, produce further clean sheets and uh, still get better in creating chances ourselves. So there is still space for improvement for us. But it was more important for me to see the way that they played against the ball today. Let's talk about Tottenham. They're up to fifth in the league now. Spurs beating Norwich today very easily. Three goals to nil. First goal, lovely individual effort, Tim, from Lucas Moura. Yeah, a special goal here. He just gets a return pass from Son, then he goes himself. And I tell you what, what a really straight. You know, he takes the net off the goal. You'll see it from a different angle. Riddles have a few tackles, and then here he's bottled up. And you see no backlift whatsoever past Tim Krul before he even knows it. Puts Tottenham up 1 0. And then. Harry Kane gets himself involved. The ball comes to Son. Son takes a shot on here and just scuffs it, and it comes to Kane too quickly. And, and you see the frustration. He wants to pass. He wants to pass into, into his path on his left foot, and here he gets a pass right in stride. Tim Krul's off his line. You're expecting Harry Kane there to put it into the open goal, but scoring woes continue for him. And then in the second half, Dean Smith must have given his team a talking to because they were slightly better. Adam Ida, ball comes at him quickly, but it still goes down as a really good chance here for Norwich, you'll see, just needs to steer that on target. He doesn't do so, but teams down near the bottom, they have to be able to defend set pieces. It gives them a way into games, and they just don't do it here. It's sloppy. They don't get the ball cleared. There's a flick, and Sanchez there smashes it home to make it 2-0 to Tottenham. And I, and I thought Son was really good at providing today, and then ultimately gets himself on the score sheet here. Nice tight control, swivels on it. And it's a really, really good strike. You'll see if here from the other angle, just kind of pulls out, waits for the pass. But this footwork here, lovely. Sets himself up, has a lot to do. And it's a brilliant strike, 3 0. Leeds United against Brentford at Ellen Road. Plenty to talk about in this game, Robbie L. Yeah, Leeds thought well. And Rafinha is one of their most creative players. Has a couple of entries in the box. This first cross comes back to him, and then he, he delivers a lovely ball just along that six yard box. Tyler Roberts. Gets his first goal, times his run in there, gets the contact, put Leeds 1-0 up into the game. So Leeds 1-0 into the second half, 49 minutes on the clock. Luke Ayling, who's missed much of the season, been out since mid-September, and he's been missed at the back. He's a little unlucky at the front end of the pitch because he gets his head to the ball there. It's a decent save, and then Brentford have enough bodies to get the ball away from danger. And Brentford got themselves back into the game. Shandon Baptiste gets his first Premier League goal. Good play on this near side, and when the ball comes back from Canyos, it takes a deflection, and that puts it on the edge of the box to Baptiste, who's coming in to 
the penalty area and you see he does a good job of just getting a good contact, keeping his composure and finding the corner of the net, which he does, and brings Brentford back level in the game. And from then, Brentford started to play with a little bit more confidence. And Brentford we saw early in the season here, there's a regain, there's a transition, turnover possession, and they do a really good job of knitting the passes together. And this time, Canyos goes in for goal and does a really good job of lifting the ball over Melier. There's the interplay, there's the run from Canyos in behind. And a lovely sweet finish over the goalkeeper that puts Brentford 2-1 ahead. A big moment in the game, Patrick Bamford, club high 17 Premier League goals last season, comes on. He's been missing since mid-September. And For us, Nicker's most satisfying play, he stars. Yep, as you know, sub comes on and who's going to get it? Yep, that man, Patrick Bamford, 95 minutes on the clock and you can see what it means to him and the Leeds faithful, Alan Road goes absolutely crazy. They've got their star striker back. He's scoring goals. And that makes everybody at Leeds feel a little bit better. Another stoppage time goal. It was against Palace in midweek when they got the winner. And Bamford today stealing a point against Brentford. There were some scenes, though, at the end of the game. This is Victor Orta, the director of football at Leeds United, with a lot of angry gestures. We're not sure to who. He's being held back by other officials at the club as best he possibly can but he is not a happy man let's hear from the match winner shall we well, after we've had a quick look at the next four for Leeds Chelsea away Man City away Arsenal and Liverpool a horrible set of fixtures for Leeds United coming up but thank goodness they've got this man back here is Patrick Bamford be honest now yeah Did you feel in those last few moments this game had gone away from you or was there one more chance in it I always felt when I was as soon as I came on the pitch that there was, I was going to get one chance and it didn't come for ages and ages and then I thought it's still time left it's time left it's going to come and uh, for sure said to me he's like you're going to get one chance and then it so happened when the chance came in the second half to go on at last was it with the message Patrick go out there and save us uh, not quite no it's just try and give a presence in the in the area um, and spin behind don't drop too short too much and just try and <laughs> try and do what you can really and I just tried to stay in the box as much as I could and I hope that I put myself in the right position eventually so with one game to go over the course of this weekend which is tomorrow Monday Everton against Arsenal the top of the table has City from a point to Liverpool a point then to Chelsea then it's West Ham six points further back who have a two-point cushion over Tottenham now who are up to fifth United up to sixth Arsenal therefore have been pushed down by the way Tottenham have got a game in hand on everyone except for Arsenal as things stand today Wolves in eighth Brighton ninth and Villa are now under Stephen Gerrard into that top half Leicester under Brendan Rodgers have dropped down. Brentford has stayed where they are. Palace moving down as well, but up has gone Leeds and Southampton. Everton being pushed down. That can change tomorrow if they can get a decent result against Arsenal. Watford are hanging out just above that drop zone. There's three points between them and then Burnley, Newcastle and Norwich who are all level on ten points. That was your Premier League update. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.